Welcome back everybody to Index Card of Day 2017 with me, Creative Katie. This is card number 27. And I actually skipped a prompt, portrait, and I came up with an idea. So I'm going back to that. Supply links in the description box below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So when I'm thinking about portrait, I was remembering that I had a head silhouette that my friend Yvonne cut out. And I found this quote says, you are allowed to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress. And I thought that quote went really well with the prompt portrait. And for me, once I have a quote, I seem to be able to be inspired. So I found the stencil and the mask for this silhouette of this girl's head. And I'm going to do negative painting again. But I want to start with some texture. So uh, in my planner video, I used this crackle stencil to make my gratitude page. And if you want to see how wonderful this stencil is, go and check out that video. You don't have to watch all of it. Watch the first part. It shows where I use this stencil repeatedly and get some wonderful, wonderful effects. So I'm going to clean my stencil and dry the modeling paste. And then I am ready to add some color. And I really wanted to use the violet and an orange with quinacridone magenta. The violet and the orange go really, really well together, as you can see. It's just, I don't know, that's just an amazing combination. And I really wanted to focus on using that. Now you have to be careful. Um, if you mix it wet on wet, they can get a little muddy, those two colors. So you just kind of have to, if it gets muddy, step back, dry it, and then come back and put more color on. I'm just using my finger and I'm working my the paint into the little nooks and crannies of the texture paste. Now with negative painting, and you've seen me do this a couple of times with the iCADs, the goal is to create an interesting, colorful, visually textured and physical textured background. It's a little limiting, a little difficult on a small card like this. It's easier, I think, on bigger papers. But I'm really trying to figure out how, what are some of the ways that you can use this. So I'm going, I thought, oh, it'd be really cool if I saw some gears in that girl's head when I put the stencil on. Now, this, did, this stenciling didn't turn out as crisp as I would have liked. But it does add color and interest on the background. You just can't make out the gears. So I'll table that idea and maybe use the gears in the head silhouette for another project. So I'm just using the same colors and just stenciling on here in it or adding stamps or marks. These colors are just so, so, so vibrant together. Some of the paint kind of went under the stencil, so I was just cleaning it up there. And you need to take the time in between layers to let it dry so you don't end up with mud. So I believe I grabbed some black and I'm using this Joggles stamp to put some black. And I've discovered that putting a little bit of black on a background that's being used for negative painting 
looks really good, works really well. I could just, yeah, leave this background the way it is. I just absolutely love that. Now I have a piece of the shelf liner and I'm going to put some white paint on it and just put some white there. Again, whatever color palette you use, then add black, white, and usually some metallic. That's my secret. And there's the metallic. I think I use bronze or copper. Copper. thinking of putting the crackle one on, but it's not really showing up as well as I would have liked, so I kind of toss it aside. The nice part is anything you add, nothing's a mistake. Everything, everything works. And then I'm just going to splatter with all the colors as well. You could do a similar thing as this and just create background papers that you can use for collage or other things. Just go and have fun. Pick out, you know, three to five colors play with them, get all sorts of color and texture on the page, and then use it for another project. Sometimes when I'm, you know, wanting to do something but not feeling overly creative, I, I pull out my jelly plate. This would be another thing to pull out and just de decorate these papers. And I'm just cleaning up all the, the paint into these coffee filters. And you can be sure that you're going to see this in some collage, some background, um, in something coming up. When I'm filing sheet papers like this that are, you know, it's half orange and half purple, where do I put it? I just put whatever I look at and whatever I see first, that's where I, I file it. So this is absolutely lovely. And I'm just taking a picture of the background because quite often I forget. And, you know, sometimes I'd like to remember or to duplicate something as close as possible. Now I could go with the black on the outside or the white. But I chose the white because black is my usual go-to. I feel very comfortable using black. White, not so much. Now I'm using the Dilutions white and it's fairly transparent in that it's not covering everything. You can still see some of the color and pattern below. Sometimes you may want to leave that. I've seen people using this technique and they leave and you can still see some of it underneath. Again, you know, I am working out the specifics of using this technique. I like it to be more of an opaque covering. Although I did, it, I did leave where there was some peeking through, and you definitely can make out the texture as well. Then I decided, you know, I'm going to splatter with the same colors, and I just left the mask on. and just cleaning up even more paint. And I find by wetting the coffee filter, it absorbs the paint easier, and I get more coverage on the coffee filter.
just making sure that I give it a good dry so I don't smear or smudge any of these splatters. And I use some metallic in there and the magenta and the purple. I was thinking of maybe painting the whole background burgundy. I'm kind of wondering how that would have looked. It's amazing when you do a project how many decisions you make along the way. If you splatter on a wet surface, you get a different kind of mark. So there is the reveal. And actually, I like it quite a bit the way it is without it being outlined. I do outline it in black, but looking back, I kind of like it without being outlined as well. I thought maybe I could just trace around on the stencil. And I thought, no, I'm going to give this a try. It was pretty easy, but there is texture there because remember we put texture paste through it. Needed, thinking it needs a little bit more something something, so I just did some dashes around. And then I have to fussy place all where this sentiment is going to go. And again, when I typed up all the different quotes and things that I thought maybe I would be using, then I just start playing with the fonts and I pick and choose fonts and sizes. And it's pretty random because I'm not making it specifically for a page that's already being partially constructed. I'm edging it with black just to make it fit in. But you could also outline it with the Posca pan, go around it with Stabilo, or do some floating around it. All will give a similar effect. I'm thinking the silhouette, the head, was just a smidge too big for what I, my purpose was. And just a reminder that the Posca pan is not permanent. So it can smear a little bit when you put the gel medium or whatever glue you're using. So be careful. You can get away with just a little bit, but don't be working it too, too uh, hard or it will run. Just thought I'd put some gold or bronze or copper around the edge. And I wanted a little bit more to stand out, so decided to put it on with my finger. And it kind of comes out more grungy, I guess. I have another idea for this quote and in this prompt, so I may just do that for on another day when I want to go off prompt. And I'm thinking I just want it to stand out a little bit more, so I'm using the Posca pen to outline the sentiment. If you've watched my videos, you know this is not something I typically do. I really don't outline with a bold line. And here I, I even go around this again, making this a little bit bolder. I just, I, you know, thought, just got, thought maybe it, I was losing it. What I could have done here and I'm surprised I didn't think of it, 
could have done some floating around the silhouette in either the black or the burgundy. So here are the other cards that I've used the um, negative painting technique with. Really try to use that deep violet and that orange with the magenta. It is a wonderful color combination, whether you do negative painting or not. I'm a little surprised that it's very similar to the keep it simple one. Here I painted the background. Here I left it more white. And I want to, I'm trying to figure it out because I want to do this finish off this art journal page. And there's a lot of white there. So I'm thinking, what can I add to that white background? Am I going to paint it in color? Am I going to, what am I going to do? What are the options? So I decided I was done. And then I thought, oh, you know, what if I put, cut out some of these hearts? I had this burgundy paper in my stash. So I cut out some little hearts and put them around. I'm thinking, okay, well, that's another way I can add some blocks of color to the place that I either put the white or the black for negative painting. So I'm going to have to play with that idea. And I had this other heart and I thought I'm going to put this in the middle of, of her head. And then I decided to make it a little bit bigger. So I put the part that I had cut off originally. The burgundy goes really well, and I think if I had painted the background burgundy, that might have worked well, and then I could have used white or the copper color to outline. But, you know, I've done this one, and I've learned a few things, and I will take that information and that knowledge and apply it to another page. Thanks for watching. There are some close-ups, including close-ups of just the background where you can see all that yumminess. Some people take pictures of those colored backgrounds that they create and then they print them off and then they use that as collage materials. So do you like this one better or the other one better? Here's that yummy, yummy background. Nothing wrong with that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next iCAD.